Paul Ray Smith was born September 24th of 1969, and he died the 4th of April of 2003. He was a United States Army Sergeant First Class who posthumously received the Medal of Honor for his actions in Operation Iraqi Freedom while serving with B Company 11th Engineer Battalion, 3rd Infantry Division in Baghdad, Iraq. His team was attacked by a group of Iraqi fighters and after a short firefight was killed by Iraqi fire. For his actions during this battle, he was recommended and approved for the Medal of Honor. Two years later, the medal, along with the newly approved Medal of Honor flag, were presented to his family, specifically to his 11-year-old son, David, at a White House ceremony by the President of the United States, George W. Bush. Hello, this is Shalom Kaysen with the Shalom Kaysen show where we do biographies of all types of people from all over the world today is troop tuesdays and our biography is paul ray smith medal of honor recipient now i know it's been a while since i've done the show and that's been because there's a lot of stuff going on uh and of course i want to have a daily show but you know, it's still a new venture so i'm working on it but there was family that came from out of town and there was a marriage treat i went on with my wife so yeah, lots of things going on, appointments, doctor's appointments, all the other crazy stuff. So we're back, hopefully back on track. I'm working on a couple of interviews for autobiographies, which will be coming up soon. So if you don't see the regular like, hey, this is, you know, uh, memorable Mondays, Troop Tuesdays, whatever. That's because I'm trying to move more towards just doing autobiography interviews. But in the meantime... Since I don't have time to interview people every day, we'll be doing these in between biographies. So let's get back to Paul Ray Smith. So Mr. Woods born uh, the 24th of September in 1969 in El Paso, Texas, to Ivan Smith and Janice Bevere. Don't know if I said that right. But when he was nine, the family moved to Tampa, Florida. As a child, he attended public schools and enjoyed sports, especially football. He also liked riding skateboards and bicycles, playing pranks with his friends and younger sister Lisa. In high school, he became interested in carpentry, even finding a part-time job as a carpenter's assistant. He also liked to work on cars, especially old ones, and enjoyed taking things apart to see how they worked, even restoring a dune buggy with a friend. In 1989, he graduated from Tampa Bay Vocational Tech High School and shortly thereafter joined the United States Army in October of 1989. He was sent to basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, before being sent to Germany for his first duty station, where he joined the 9th Engineer Battalion. Later, he served during the Persian Gulf War. He deployed with B Company in October of 1996 as part of the 2nd Brigade Combat Team, the covering force for Operation Joint Endeavor and Operation Joint Guardian. The battalion returned to Schweinfurt in April of 1997. In 1999, he was posted to the 11th Engineer Battalion, with which he was deployed to Kosovo in May 2001, where he was responsible for daily presence patrols in the town of Gnizilane. In the spring of 2002, he received a promotion to Sergeant First Class and completed the Advanced Non-Commissioned Officer course in August of 2002. Let's take a quick break for an ad because we got to try to make some money to keep this show going. Ever been at a restaurant and need to easily split the bill? Ever bought a pizza for your buddies and they wanted to pay you back but had no cash? Well, that's what Cash App is perfect for. With Cash App, you can send and receive money in seconds. And not only that, but you can get a free debit card to go along with your Cash App. And if you're into cryptocurrency like myself, you can buy and sell Bitcoin right in the app. Use the link in the description to get $5 when you first use the Cash App. Don't say I never did anything for you. If you like getting paid and Bitcoins, get $5 free with the Cash App. That link is in the description below. Now, back to the show. As part of the 2003 invasion of Iraq, he was assigned to B Company, 11th Engineer Battalion of the 3rd Infantry Division. His company was supporting the 2nd Battalion, 7th Infantry Regiment as it made its way through the Karbala Gap across the Euphrates River and to Saddam International Airport in Baghdad. On the 4th of April 2003, a 100-man force was assigned to block the highway between Baghdad and the airport, about one mile east of the airport. 
After a brief battle, several of the Iraqis were captured. Smith spotted a walled enclosure nearby with a tower overlooking it. He and his squad set about building an impromptu enemy of prisoner war holding area in the enclosure. Smith and 16 other men used an armored combat earth mover, similar to a bulldozer, to knock a hole in the south wall of the courtyard. On the north side, there was a metal gate that Smith assigned several men to guard. These men noticed 50 to 100 Iraqi fighters who had taken positions in trenches just beyond the gate. He summoned a Bradley fighting vehicle to attack their position. Three nearby M113 armored personnel carriers came to support the attack. <clears throat> An M113 was hit, possibly by a mortar, and all three crewmen were wounded. The Bradley damaged and running low on ammunition withdrew to reload during a lull in the battle. Smith organized the evacuation of the injured M113 crewmen. However, behind the courtyard was a military aid station crowded with 100 combat casualties. To protect it from being overrun, Smith chose to fight on rather than withdraw the wounded. Meanwhile, some Iraqi fighters had taken position in the tower overlooking the courtyard just over the west wall. The Iraqis now had the Americans in the courtyard under an intense crossfire. Smith took command of the M113 and ordered a driver to position it so that he could attack both the tower and the trenches. He manned the M113's machine gun, going through three boxes of ammunition. A separate team, led by First Sergeant Tim Campbell, attacked the tower from the rear, killing the Iraqis. As the battle ended, Smith's machine gun fell silent. His comrades found him slumped in the turret hatch. His armored vest was peppered with 13 bullet holes. The vest ceramic armor inserts, both front and back, cracked in numerous places. The M113 he was manning was not fitted with protective ACAV gun shields, which had been standard since the Vietnam War. Later in the Iraq conflict, modern gun shields were fielded. But the fatal shot, one of the last from the tower, had entered his neck and passed through his brain, killing uh SFC, but let me find out what that stands for. Oh, Sergeant First Class Smith. Before deploying to Iraq, Smith had written to his parents, there are two ways to come here, stepping off the plane and being carried off the plane. It doesn't matter how I come home because I'm prepared to give all that I am to ensure that all my boys make it home. Let me read that again because I messed up the first time. There are two ways to come home. Stepping off the plane and being carried off the plane. Doesn't matter how I come home because I'm prepared to give all that I am to ensure that all my boys make it home. Smith was cremated and his ashes scattered in the Gulf of Mexico where he loved to fish. He has a memorial marker in Arlington National Cemetery, Arlington, Virginia. And his marker can be found in Memorial Section D, Lot 67. He also has a memorial at his high school outside of the school's NJROTC building. At the time of his death, he had served for 13 years, and for his actions during battle, he posthumously received the Medal of Honor. On the 4th of April 2005, exactly two years after he was killed, his 11-year-old son David received the Medal of Honor from President George W. Bush, along with the Medal of Honor flag. Sergeant First Class Smith is survived by his wife, Bridget, son David, and stepdaughter Jessica. And now for another quick break for a special announcement. Do you like traveling? Have you ever traveled to another place and had nothing but problems with the hotel? There's no microwave, there's no kitchen, There's the bed's too small. Ugh. Well, stop living in the past. Hotels are done and now you need to travel with Airbnb. It's the easiest way to vacation. There are hundreds of rooms, lofts, whole houses available on Airbnb for a fraction of the price that it costs to get a hotel. I once stayed in an Airbnb for a whole week for $150. The nearest hotel was $100 a night. Not only that, but the host had coffee and breakfast available every morning. So, if you've never used Airbnb before, sign up with the link in the description below and you'll get $40 towards your next trip. It's the easiest way to save money when you're traveling and to travel the way you want to get the room you want. Click the link in the description below to get $40 towards your next trip. Get all that by signing up for Airbnb with the link in the description. Thank you and back to the show. 
All right. So <clears throat> what can we learn um, from Sergeant First Class Smith's life? Well, he definitely um, was brave and he had fortitude. And fortitude just means you can do the right thing um, no matter what it might cost. And whether people agree if the war was correct or not, he did serve his country and um, did what he felt was right and protected his soldiers. So fortitude is definitely very important, especially in war, uh, to do the right thing and not to get caught up in kind of the vicious, viciousness of it and to focus on protecting the people back home and protecting the people in your unit. So sometimes you might be asked to do a very hard thing and it might be, you know, could be a life threatening thing. Most times it won't. But having the practicing fortitude daily of doing the little hard things here, little hard things there and not complaining about it and thinking about, oh, hey, there's people who need me to do this and it's, you know, uh, beneficial for them. That will help you when the time comes to do the very hard things. So fortitude is definitely very important. That's pretty much it. This is Shalom Kaysen, and this is the Shalom Kaysen Show. Uh, if you loved this episode, even if you just slightly enjoyed it, please subscribe. We're on YouTube, and everywhere podcasts can be heard. iTunes, Spotify, Google, and of course, Anchor. So go to your favorite podcast app, search the Shalom Kaysen Show, and subscribe. If you subscribe on iTunes, make sure to leave me a review. I try to release episodes as fast as I can interview people, which is usually daily. So make sure you check back. If you want to help support this cause of collecting the world's autobiographies, then please click the link in the description to give a one-time or recurring contribution. Again, that link to help me keep collecting these autobiographies is in the description below. And that's it. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, keep learning from life.